And I want y'all to hear this guy talk about the need to recolonize Africa. Listen, they, they're being open about things. Listen to this. Hold on, man. I want y'all to listen to this. These people, they're not even hiding stuff no more. They're saying the quiet part out loud right now. Now, this is Eric Prince. He owns the largest private military in the world, Blackwater, or, or Academy. They call it Academy now. All right? So, you know, the U.S. government sends these guys in to do a lot of dirty work so the administrative backlash won't hit the U.S. government. But listen to this guy here talking about recolonizing. Hold on. Then it's time for us to just put to just to, to put the imperial hat back on to say we're going to govern those countries if you're incapable of governing yourselves because enough is enough we're done being invaded because our own national security risk is it exactly security interests are at stake you can say that about pretty much all of Africa they're incapable of governing themselves and benefiting their citizens because the governments there are all about looting and pillaging and lining their pockets and going shopping in Paris. Instead of actually right, hold on a second, hold on. Better, People better on the left are going to watch this. They're going to say, "Wait a minute, Eric Prince is talking about being a colonialist again." Absolutely, yes. Then it's oh, you see, and and tethers want to come here and get mad at us. You think the tethers want to come over here and get mad? You got all the smoke for us. But when these white supremacists sit around talking about recolonizing that ass, y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah? They ain't even hiding it. Where's the tethers who's always talking greasy up in our faces, all in our spaces, nagging us? You niggas or hetas. Where y'all at when these people are talking about going in there recolonizing? They're not even hiding it. And that's Eric Prince. This dude don't be bluffing. Yeah? These people ain't messing around. And let me tell you something. The thing is, they're the ones who destabilizes these countries. They're the ones who destabilize these countries over in Africa. They go in there and destabilize the governments and then say, oh my, look at these governments. Look at them. They're not even capable of governing themselves. Oh, their leaders, look how corrupt their leaders are. But the leaders are put in by the Western powers. The leaders are puppets because when you have a grassroots leader that's really doing for the people, they have him taken out and then they push in their own puppet that they've groomed. So the destabilization is because of the white supremacists destabilizing these countries. And they'll do it and say, hey, look, oh, my God, look at those guys. They can't govern worth a damn. We're going to have to go in there and just colonize everybody again. Yeah? Y'all better be getting on code over there. Y'all got to get on code over there heavy. Yeah? Y'all got to get on code over there. Yeah, but that, that, that we love white zaddy stuff. Those, let me tell you something, man. Those tribes over there are useless. I'm saying this from a strategic standpoint. All of those tribal differences and beefs that y'all got over there, are absolutely useless. Y'all have to put that aside and get codified to stop the invasions. There's no reason why y'all should be holding on to these insignificant tribal differences. And many of these tribal differences and tribal boundaries were recently created. These are not old ancient tribes. Let's be real. I want us to get that straight. These are not old ancient tribes. A lot of what's going on over there, and I keep saying this, um, they've been remixed so much all over Africa. The cultural continuity isn't there. There's not a long cultural continuity in those different tribes over there because this person from that tribe was thrown into that tribe and that tribe had to flee and become part of another tribe. And then they took the name and then they named that tribe, the other tribe. So it's been remixed so many damn times. It's insignificant. 
these tribal groups don't have any type of cultural continuity. You understand? And, and this is, I want foundational black Americans to understand the significance of this too, because the, the narrative is always thrown on us is that we don't know our history. We got to tap back in to Africa to pick up on the cultural continuity of Africa, which isn't true. There's nothing we're going to pick up on over there. The cultural continuity of Africa has been busted up and remixed all over the place. We're not missing anything in Africa. We have a longer cultural continuity as foundational black Americans. This whole thing about we got to go back and no, we don't. We go to Africa to do business if they want to do business. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go over there and do business with brothers and sisters. Stay here, but have a business base. Do business with black people in the diaspora so that we can have a global um, foothold on certain things so we can start building globally. Not, hey, let me just, I'm not trying to go to some village and live in a village and swing on a hammock eating mangoes with a damn musty dashiki on. No. I want to go to Africa and y'all want to build something there. Let's build something and do trade and do international business like other groups were of the same race. But the thing is, those those tribal beefs are too damn heavy and they don't want to get rid of them damn tribal beefs. But yeah, we're not missing anything. I want people to stop trying to shame us. There was a thread on, um, who, whose thread? Um, this was on... Instagram and it was a sister talking about how hey you know what I don't want to go to Africa you know I'm a black American I'm you know I'm, I'm a black American I don't I don't need to go to Africa and a lot of people in the comments were commenting on it a lot of people were agreeing with her uh, and there you had the the some people talking about oh these self-hate niggas they don't know who they is oh y'all don't know who y'all is out here you know no we do we do know who we are. We know exactly who we are. And we're not trying to go over to Africa to, to live in a, in a country that was created during the damn Berlin Conference in a, in a new land boundary that was relatively um, recently created. We're not trying to do that. That's, we're already dealing with white supremacy here. Yeah, not I'm not I'm not saying this to denigrate our African brothers and sisters. I'm really not. I'm really not. But I, I, I want the shame tactic to stop. There's this whole thing where people play the Wakanda game and try to pretend that there's a cultural continuity that we're missing, that we're, we're, we're not. We're not missing any cultural continuity because Africa has been remixed so many times through the Arab invasions through the Portuguese colonization, the British colonization, French. It's, it's been remixed. So when when tethers come over and try to pop their collar, like, oh, nigga, we have our language, nigga. We own our land. and la No, no, no. You, no. Your land has been remixed. Your land boundaries were created during the Berlin Conference by white people. You understand? And they gave you um, pseudo independence that you really don't have because they still control the trade and the economy over there. So they still control it. You understand? See, we got to call this stuff out. And even the language, let's be real about the languages over there. Many of those languages, They have loan words and a lot of the languages come from invasion, invaders, like Swahili. Swahili came from the Arab invasion. That's why there's so many words in Swahili that's Arabic. Even Yoruba, there's a lot of Arabic words and, um, um, and English words and words that came out of English. So there were a lot of loan words from other um, um, colonizers so a lot of these, and even the, the written part of the language is in Arabic, so they don't even have the own, own written languages in Arabic. You dig? So a lot of 
that culture comes from being colonized. Let's think, we got to tell the truth. You, you dig? We, we, we got to tell the truth about this stuff. They sit here and act like they come and try to sell the, yeah, they're Creole languages. Thank you. My Herbert hit it right on the money. Oh, y'all didn't know that? Yeah. Yes. Those languages over there are not as ancient and as old as you think they are. Those are like Creole languages mixed with some Bantu, mixed with Arabic, mixed with some English, mixed with Portuguese. You know? Yeah, Swahili was created with them kind of mixing some Bantu languages with Arabic. Because the they it was a, a, a trading language. They needed to be able to better trade with the people, so they created Swahili. Yeah? So yeah, yeah, a lot of y'all don't know this stuff. A lot of y'all don't know this stuff. So a lot of their languages that they try to brag about, that came out of colonization. That came out of colonization. Yeah? So we're not going to let people sit here and try to make it seem like there's this whole plethora of freedom and um, a continuity of freedom. It, it's not. It's not a continuity of freedom. There's a continuity of colonization over there. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of y'all don't know this stuff. Yeah, a lot of it is basically Creole, a lot of Creole. Yeah? Yeah, the Swahili was mostly um, in Eastern Africa. That's true. Because of the Arabs were over there. You know, the Arabs, the influence is still heavy over there in Eastern Africa. Amharic. That one's come from a lot of um, Arabic. They got a lot of Arabic loan words and all of that stuff, too. Yeah? Real heavy stuff. And, and I'm saying this because you got these white supremacist mercenaries literally sitting up here plotting on colonizing Africa again. They're sitting up like, hey man, we might as well go in here and just, you know, get put our imperial hat on. These Africans ain't running this thing like they need to. But nobody, y'all don't have no smoke for them. All of the vitriol is for us. Y'all come in our spaces. All of the vitriol comes from us, to us.